are these people? Do you heard of this, Care Bear? I know I talked about it a bit last week. You talked um, a little bit. That's yeah, we're we're gonna get into it a little bit. Go ahead. No, I kind of started reading the article that you were prepping last night, but yeah. Um, but yeah, explain this. So, Lavender AI is a targeting system that uh, the Israelis created. Right, we're gonna get into how it how it was dreamt up, right? But Mint Press letting you know that an investigation published by 972 Magazine reports that Israeli intelligence sources reveal the Israeli military used an AI system called Lavender and were given permission to kill thousands of civilians in pursuit of low-ranking Hamas members, okay? That's, that's where we start. So, um... Democracy Now! has the author of this article. We're going to get to this article in a second, but I wanted him, they, they give a good intro for this, so I wanted to let him speak about it. Um, hold on. I, I got to pause real quick. Um, and then turn the sound on and full screen it. Statistics: More than 50% of the casualties, more than 6,000 people at that time, came from a smaller group of families. It's an expression of, you know, the, the, the family unit being 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 destroyed. And I think that machine and and and, and the way it was used um, 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 led to that. Wait, that's not where it's supposed to start. Hold on. No. Play. 50% of the casualties. Social intelligence. There we go. This is Democracy Now, democracynow.org, like the War and Peace Report. There. I'm Amy Goodman. The Israeli publications Plus 972 magazine and Local Call have exposed how the Israeli military used art artificial intelligence, known as Lavender, to develop a kill list in Gaza that includes as many as 37,000 Palestinians who were targeted for assassination with little human oversight. The report is based in part on interviews with six Israeli intelligence officers who'd firsthand involvement with the AI system. 972 reports, quote, Lavender has played a central role in the unprecedented bombing of Palestinians especially during the early stages of the war. In fact, according to the sources, its influence on the military's operations was such that they essentially treated the outputs of the AI machine as if it were a human decision. A second AI system, known as Where's Daddy, tracked Palestinian men on the kill list. It was purposely designed to help Israel target individuals when they were at home at night with their families. One intelligence officer told the publications, quote, we were not interested in killing operatives only when they were in a military building or engaged in a military activity. On the contrary, the IDF bombed them in homes without hesitation as a first option. It's much easier to bomb a family's home. The system is built to look for them in these situations, they said. Today, we spend the hour with the Israeli investigative journalist Yuval Abraham, who broke the story for 972 and Local Call. It's headlined, Lavender, the AI machine directing Israel's bombing spree in Gaza. I spoke with Yuval Abraham yesterday and began by asking him to lay out what he found. Yeah, thank you for, for having me again, Amy. Um, it is a very long uh, piece. It's 8,000 words. Um, and we divided it into six different steps. And, and each step represents a process in the highly automated way uh, in which the military uh, marked uh, targets um, since, since October. And the first finding is, is, is Lavender. So, so Lavender was designed by the military. Its purpose um, was, when it was being designed, to, to mark the low ranking operatives in the Hamas and Islamic Jihad military wings. That, that was the intention. Because, you know, Israel estimates that there are between 30 to 40,000 uh, Hamas operatives, and it's a very, very large number. And they understood that the only way for them to mark these people is by relying on artificial intelligence. And that was the intention. Now, what sources told me is that after October 7, the military basically made a decision that all of these tens of thousands of people are now people that could potentially be bombed inside their houses, meaning not only killing them, but everybody was in the building, the children, the families. Um, and they understood that in order to try to attempt to do that, they are going to have to rely on this AI machine called Lavender with very minimal human supervision. I mean, one source said that he felt he was acting as a rubber stamp on the machine's decisions. Now, what Lavender does is it scans information on probably 90% of the population of Gaza. So we're talking about you know, more than a million people. And it gives each individual a rating between one to 100. A rating that is an expression of the likelihood that the machine thinks based on a list of small features, and we can get to that later, that that individual 
is a member of the Hamas or Islamic Jihad military wings. Sources told me that the military knew, because they checked, they took a random sampling and checked one by one, the military knew that approximately 10% of the people that the machine was marking to be killed were not Hamas militants. They were not, some of them had a loose connection to Hamas. Others had completely no connection to Hamas. I mean, one source said how the machine would bring people who had the exact same name and nickname as a Hamas operative, or people who had similar communication profiles, like it could be civil defense workers, police officers in Gaza. And they implemented, again, minimal supervision on the machine. One source said that he spent 20 seconds um, per target before authorizing the bombing of, of the alleged low-ranking Hamas militants. Often it was also a civilian, um, 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 killing those people inside their houses. And I think this, the, the reliance on artificial intelligence here to mark those targets, um, and, and basically the deadly way in which the, the, the officers spoke about how they were using the machine, could very well be um, part of the reason why in, in, in the first you know, six weeks after October 7th, like one of the main characteristics of the policies that were in place were entire Palestinian families being wiped out inside their houses. I mean, if you look at UN statistics, more than 50% of the casualties, more than 6,000 people at that time came from a smaller group of families. It's an expression of, you know, the, the, the family unit being, being, being destroyed. And I think that machine and, and, and the way it was used um, 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 led to that. So... Any questions before we get started? So basically, this is... <laughs> I keep going back to those drones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's in some ways worse than that, but yeah. Um... Yeah, but... But it's like, a person doesn't even have to necessarily... From what I understand, a person doesn't necessarily have to control it. The AI yeah. does it on its own. Yeah. I mean, essentially, they rubber stamped so, uh, the Air Force using their own, you know, this is just targeting, right? So, right. but we're going to get into it. So I brought this article. Again, he said it was 8,000 words. I linked it down in the description. We're not going to go through quite all of it, um, but I tried to pull the important parts for people. So we're going to we're gonna go a bit more in depth. Um, so... In 2021, a book titled The Human Machine Team, How to Create Synergy Between Human and Artificial Intelligence That Will Revolutionize Our World, was released in English under the pen name Brigadier General Y.S. In it, the author, a man who we confirm to be the current commander of the elite Israeli intelligence unit 8200, makes the case for designing a special machine that could rapidly process massive amounts of data to generate thousands of potential targets for military strikes in the heat of war. Such technology, he writes, would resolve what he described as a human bottleneck for both locating the new targets and decision-making to approve the targets. Such a, mean, such a machine, it turns out, actually exists. So that machine's called Lavender, um, yep. which is a nice flowery name for it, um, but it's just essentially humans couldn't, Humans couldn't kill fast enough for them, so we got to make robots to target them. So the result, as the sources testified, is that thousands of Palestinians, most of them women and children, are people who were not involved in the fighting, were wiped out by Israeli airstrikes, especially during the first week of the war, because of the AI program's decisions. We were not interested in killing Hamas operatives only when they were in a military building or engaged in a military activity. An intelligence officer told 972, on the contrary, the IDF bombed them in homes without hesitation. As a first option, it's much easier to bomb a family's home. The system is built to look for them in these situations. The Lavender Machine joins another AI system, the Gospel, about which information was revealed oh, in a God. previous investigation. <laughs> by 972 and local call. It's literally, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, in November, as well as the Israeli military's own publication, a fundamental difference between the two systems is the definition of the target. Whereas the gospel marks buildings and structures that the army claims militants operate from, Lavender marks people and puts them on a kill list. Yay! Isn't it? Don't you love learning about man-made horrors? It's great. It's just the best. So... In addition, according to the source, when it came to targeting alleged junior militants, what do you think that means? 
junior militants. Child soldiers. Yes. Marked by Lavender, the army preferred to only use unguided missiles, commonly known as dumb bombs in contrast to smart precision bombs, which can destroy entire buildings on top of their occupants and cause significant casualties. Well, you don't want to waste expensive bombs on unimportant people. Kids. It's very expensive for the country, and there's a shortage of those bombs. Said C, one of the intelligence officers, another source said that they had personally authorized the bombing of hundreds of private homes and alleged junior officers marked by Lavender with many of these attacks killing civilians and entire families as collateral damage. So so this just kind of confirms that Hamas, they just consider everyone Hamas. Well, we're gonna, like junior we're, operatives? Oh, it's they have, a formu- they have a formula. It's not even. So in an unprecedented move, according to two of the sources, the army also decided during the first week of the war for every junior Hamas operative that Lavender marked, it was permissible to kill up to 15 to 20 civilians. In the past, the military did not authorize any collateral damage. During assassinations of low-ranking militants, the sources added that in the event that the target was a senior Hamas official with the rank of battalion or brigade commander, the army on several occasions authorized the killing of more than 100 civilians in the assassination of a single command. I mean, I feel like they're just telling on themselves here. Um, Yes. Which they literally are. The sources said that the approval to automatically adopt Lavender's kill list, which had previously been used only as an auxiliary tool, was granted about two weeks into the war, after intelligence personnel manually checked the accuracy of random sample of several hundred targets selected by the AI system, when that sample found that Lavender's results had reached 90% accuracy. Okay, so that's... This is in a two-week span, right? They, they allege that this had 90% accuracy, right? In identifying an individual's affiliation with Hamas, the army authorized the sweeping use of the system. From that moment, sources said that if Lavender decided an individual was a militant in Hamas, they were essentially asked to treat that as an order with no requirement to independently check why the machine made that choice or to examine the raw intelligence data on which it's based. At 5 a.m., the Air Force would come and bomb all the houses that we marked, he said. We took out thousands of people. We didn't go through them one by one. We put everything into automated systems, and as soon as one of the marked individuals was at home, he immediately became a target. We bombed him and his house. It was very surprising for me that we were asked to bomb a house to kill a ground soldier whose importance in the fighting was so low, said one source. About the use of AI to mark alleged low-ranking militants, I nicknamed those targets garbage targets. Still, I found them more ethical than the targets that we bombed just for deterrence. High-rises that are evacuated and toppled just to cause destruction. The deadly results of this loosening of restrictions in the early stage of the war was staggering. According to data from the Palestinian Health Ministry in Gaza, on which the Israeli army had relied almost exclusively since the beginning of the war, Israel killed some 15,000 Palestinians, almost half of the death toll so far, in the first six weeks of the war up until a week-long ceasefire was agreed on November 24th. The Lavender software analyzes information collected on most of the 2.3 million residents of the Gaza Strip through a system of mass surveillance then assesses and ranks the likelihood that each particular person is active in the military wing of Hamas, or PIJ. According to sources, the machine gives almost every single person in Gaza a rating from 1 to 100, expressing how likely it is that they are a militant. Lavender lures to identify characteristics of known Hamas and PIJ operatives whose information was fed to the machine as training data, and then to locate these same characteristics, also called features, among the general population, sources explained, an individual found to have several different incriminating features will reach a high rating and thus automatically becomes a potential target for assassination. 
In the Human Machine Team, the book referenced at the beginning of this article, the current commander of Unit 8200 advocates for such a system without referencing Lavender by name. The commander himself also isn't named, but five sources in 8200 confirm the commander is the author, as reported also by Haaretz. Describing human personnel as a bottleneck that limits the Army's capacity during a military operation, we humans cannot possess, process so much information. Doesn't how many, it doesn't matter how many people you have tasked to produce targets during the war, you still cannot produce enough targets per day. The book isn't the only time a senior Israeli commander hinted at the existence of human targeted machines like Lavender. 972 and local call have obtained footage of a private lecture given by the commander of Unit 8200's Secret Data Science and AI Center, Colonel Yov, at Tel Aviv University AI Week in 2023, which was reported on at the time in the Israeli media. In the lecture, the commander speaks about a new, sophisticated target machine used by the Israeli army that detects dangerous people based on their likeness to existing lists of known militants on which it was trained. Using the system, we managed to identify Hamas missile squad commanders, Colonel Yoav said in the lecture, referring to Israel's May 2021 military operation in Gaza when the machine was used for the first time. So, uh, the lecture contains illustrations of how the machine works, it's fed data, right? Learns to notice their features, and then it rates other Palestinians based on how similar they are to the militants. We rank the results and determine the threshold at which to attack a target. Uh, Yov said in the lecture, emphasizing that eventually people of flesh and blood take the decisions. In the defense realm, ethically speaking, we put a lot of emphasis on this. These tools are meant to help intelligence officers break their barriers. In practice, however, sources who have used Lavender in recent months say human agency and precision were substituted by mass target creation and lethality. So, senior officer who used Lavender echoed to 972 and local call that in the current war, officers were not required to independently review the AI system assessment. In order to save time, enable the mass production of human targets without hindrances, Everything was statistical. Everything was neat. It was very, very dry. B said he noted that his lack of supervision was permitted despite internal checks showing that Lavender's calculations were considered accurate only 90% of the time. In other words, it was known in advance that 10% of the human targets slated for assassination were not members of Hamas. Right? So, for example, sources explain that Lavender machines sometimes mistakenly flagged individuals who had communications patterns similar to Hamas, including police and civil defense workers, militants' relatives, residents who happen to have a name and nickname identical to that of operative, and Gazans who used a device that once belonged to a Hamas operative. So you pick up a cell phone on the ground, you could then be bombed, is what right. that sounds like. So. Right. Oh, so similar problems exist with the ability of target machines to assess the phone used by an individual marked for assassination in war. Palestinians change phones all the time, said the source. People lose contact with their families, give their phone to a friend or wife, maybe lose it. There is no way to rely 100% on the automatic mechanism that determines which phone number belongs to whom. According to the sources, the Army knew that the minimal human supervision in place would not discover these faults. There was no zero-error policy. Mistakes were treated statistically, said a source. who used Lavender because of the scope and magnitude. The protocol was that even if you don't know for sure that the machine is right, you know, you know that statistically it's fine, so you go for it. In a statement... To 972, the IDF spokesperson claimed in response to this article that Hamas places its operatives and military assets in the heart of civilian population. Uh, isn't that nice? Um, the six orcas we spoke to echoed this to some degree, saying that Hamas' extensive tunnel system deliberately passes under hospitals and schools. So this is their excuse for using this, right? So... Yeah, the sources argue that many Israeli strikes kill civilians as a result of these tactics by Hamas, a characterization that human rights groups warns evades Israel's onus for inflicting the casualties. So, 
In contrast, the Israeli army's official statements, the sources explained that a major reason for the unprecedented death toll from Israel's current bombardment is the fact that the army has systematically attacked targets in their private homes alongside their families, in part because it was easier from an intelligence standpoint to mark family houses using automated systems. Indeed, several sources emphasize that, as opposed to numerous cases of Hamas operatives engaging in military activity from civilian eras, in the case of systemic assassination strikes, the army routinely made the act of choice to bomb suspected militants when inside a civilian household from which no military activity took place. This choice, they said, was a reflection of the way Israel's system of mass surveillance in Gaza is designed. So, Which is bullshit. Yeah. So we're going to get into where's daddy now. I, I think this is one of the things I brought up. Yeah. Right? Mentioned, yeah. So um, in order to identify the moment operatives entered their houses in real time, various additional automatic softwares have been developed. These programs track thousands of individuals simultaneously, identify when they are at home, and send an automatic alert to the targeting officer, who then marks the house for bombing. One of several of these tracking softwares revealed here for the first time is called Where's Daddy? You put hundreds of targets into the system and wait to see who you can kill, said one source with knowledge of the system. It's called broad hunting. You copy-paste from the list that the target system produces. So, Caitlin Johnston, one of our favorites, wanted to make sure that we understood some of this, right? So, one aspect of the recent revelations about the IDS Lavender system that's not getting enough consideration is the fact that it is completely devastating to the narrative that Israel has been killing so many civilians because Hamas uses human shield. If you right. missed this story, a major report from 972 revealed that Israel has been using an AI system called Lavender, right? to kill lists of suspected members of Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which have been carried out with hardly any human verification. Um, one automated system, psychopathically named Where's Daddy, tracks suspects to their homes so that they could be killed with their entire families. The IDF has been knowing, knowingly killing 15 to 20 civilians at a time to kill one Hamas operative and up to 100 civilians at a time to take out a senior official. Right? The Human Shields narrative that's become so popular in Israel apologia insists that the reason the IDF kills so many civilians in its attack on Gaza is because Hamas intentionally surrounds itself with non-combatants as a strategy to make the innocent Israelis reluctant to drop bombs on them. But as The Intercept's Ryan Grimm recently observed on Twitter, and she mentions Abby Martin too, we covered Robert Inkelesh covering that, I do believe, right? Um, the Human Shields narrative. Um, this is soundly refuted by the re revelation that Israel has been intentionally waiting to target suspected Hamas members when it knows they'll surrounded by civilians. So, Israel's argument that kills so many civilians because Hamas uses human shields is torn apart by the revelation that the IDF prefers to attack its targets when they are home with their family. Tweeted Grimm, it's not Hamas using human shields, it is Israel deliberately hunting families. Right. A human so shield like, is... Yeah. Yeah, so basically it's the idea of like if we take down a Haras operative and they're with their families and God forbid if there are other people around them, yeah. so be it. Yep. So a human shield is only a shield if your enemy values human life and seeks to minimize civilian death. Israel deliberately maximizes the number of civilians it can kill by waiting until a target is with his entire family, Palestinians are not shields to Israel. They are all targets. This is such an important point. Advocates for Palestine like Abby Martin have for years been presenting compelling arguments against Israel's human shields claims, and common sense shows that the presence of civilians is clearly not a deterrent to Israeli airstrikes. Because of these 972 revelations, the lie has now been thoroughly and irrefutably debunked. Civilians aren't getting killed because Hamas hides behind them. Civilians are getting killed because the IDF waits until suspected Hamas members are on civilians to target them with high-powered military explosives. So, yeah. Um, she mentions the uh, Prime Minister Golda Meir quote, Someday we may be able to forgive the Arabs for killing our children, but we will never forgive them for making us kill their children. Right? Which is just... Pause. 
the worst quote. Are you going? What? Well, yeah. Are you going to forgive the Germans for killing yours? That, no. You know. So Caitlin writes. You see this quote pop up all the time in varying iterations, shared approvingly by Israel apologists around the world as though it's something wise and brilliant instead of a horrific defense of murdering children. But it turns out this morally depraved quote isn't even true by the most generous of interpretations. Israel isn't being forced to kill Palestinian children. It is knowingly choosing to. The human shields narrative is just one more instance in which Israel pretends to be the victim while actually being the victimizer. They lied about beheaded babies so they could get away with murdering babies. They lied about mass rape so that they could get away with committing rape. They lied about Hamas using yep. civilians as human shields so that they could kill civilians. So they can kill them. Yep. Yep. The lie about being victims so that they can victimize. Right. So I have a little bit more uh, and then we'll finish up with Richie. So, evidence of this policy is also clear from the data. During the first month of war, half of the fatalities, 6,000 people or so, belonged to 1,000 families, many of which were completely wiped out while inside their homes, according to UN figures. The proportion of entire families bombed in their homes in the current war is much higher than in the 2014 Israeli operation in Gaza. Oh, that's funny, before October 7th, interesting. Which is previously... Ooh. Israel's right. deadliest war on the Strip, further suggesting the prominence of this policy. Another source said that each time the pace of assassinations waned, more targets were added to systems like Where's Daddy to locate individuals that entered their homes and could therefore be bombed. He said that the decision of who to put into the tracking system could be made by relatively low-ranking officers in the military hierarchy. One day... Totality of my own accord, I adding something like a thousand new targets to the tracking system because the number of attacks we were conducting decreased, the source said. That made sense to me. In retrospect, it seems like a serious decision I made, and such decisions were not made at high level. The source has said that in the first two weeks of the war, several thousand targets were initially inputted into locating programs like Where's Daddy, that included all the members of Hamas's elite special forces unit. The Nukba, all of Hamas's anti-tank operatives, and anyone who entered Israel on October 7th. But before long, the kill list was drastically expanded. In the end, it was everyone. Mark by Lavender, one source explained, tens of thousands. This happened a few weeks later when the Israeli brigade entered Gaza, and there were already fewer uninvolved people, i.e. civilians in the northern area. According to this source, even some miners were marked by Lavender as targets for bombing. Normally, operatives are over the age of 17, but that was not a condition. One source said that when attacking junior operatives, including those marked by AI systems like Lavender, the number of civilians they were allowed to kill alongside each target was fixed during the initial weeks of the war, up to 20. Another source claimed the fixed number was up to 15. These collateral damage degrees, as the military calls them, were applied broadly to all suspected junior militants, the sources said, regardless of their rank, military importance, and age, but no specific case-by-case -case examination to weigh. So, according to A, who was an officer in a target operation room in the current war, the Army's International Law Department has never before given such sweeping approval for such a high collateral damage degree. It's not just that you can kill any person who is a Hamas soldier, which is clearly permitted and legitimate in terms of international law, but they directly tell you you are allowed to kill them along with many civilians. Every person who wore a Hamas uniform in the past year or two could be bombed with 20 civilians as collateral damage, even without special permission. A continued in practice, the principle of proportionality did not exist. So Amjad al-Sheikh, a young Palestinian from Gaza, said many of these family members were killed in that bombing. A resident of Shujaya, east of Gaza City, he was at a local supermarket that day when he heard five blasts that shattered glass windows. I ran to my family's house, but there was no building there anymore, al-Sheikh told 972. The street was filled with screams and smoke, entire resident blocks. Uh, where'd I go? This way, this way, sorry. al Sheikh told 972, the street was filled with screams and smoke. Entire residence blocks turned to mountains of rubble and deep pits. 
People began to search in the cement using their hands, and so did I, looking for signs of my family home. Al Sheikh's wife and baby daughter survived, protected from the rubble by a closet that fell on top of them. But he found 11 other members of his family among them, his sisters, brothers, their young children, dead under the rubble. According to the human rights group Bastellum, the bombing that day destroyed dozens of buildings, killed dozens of people, and buried hundreds under the ruin of their homes. The sources who spoke to 972 explained that there was sometimes a substantial gap between the moment the tracking systems, like where his daddy, alerted an officer that a target had entered their house and the bombing itself, leading to the killing of whole families even without hitting the army's target. It happened to me many times that we attacked a house, but the person wasn't even home, one source said. The result is that he killed a family for no reason. Sometimes the target was at home earlier, and then at night he went to sleep somewhere else, say underground, and you didn't know about it, one of the sources said. There are times when you double-check the location, and there are times when you just say, just say, okay, he was in the house in the last few hours, so you can just bomb. Another source described a similar incident that affected him and made him want to be interviewed with this investigation. We understood that the target was home at 8 p.m. In the end, the Air Force bombed the house at 3 a.m. Then we found in the span of that time he had managed to move himself to another house with his family. There were two other families with children in the building we bombed. So, anything to say before I let Richie close us out? It's, I mean, I think, again, I keep thinking of those damn drones. I know. But it's just the idea of, like, thank you for putting that in my head. Head? Um, yep. But, it, so basically, it just sounds like, to me, I think it just became to the point where it's just indiscriminate in terms of, I could plug it, well, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just so I can understand it. So, like, Mm. A lower level IDF soldier can plug in. I want to target you, for example, and like maybe because you looked at me the wrong way or what. Right. And then yeah, all you got to do is connect it to another lower level Hamas militant in some way or fashion, right. you know, and you'd you'd be fine to add that and then that target and then not. Then you would turn into a Hamas militant, you know, like, and they would just kill your family. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that was like from 8 a.m., and then they went out at 3 a.m. Like, that's a big gap, 8 and 3, you know. So, 8 p.m. to 3 a.m., whatever it was. But, yep. Richie, Richie's got some closing thoughts as well. You know, he covered this. I'm only going to play a little bit of it, and then we'll, we'll head out of here. So let's see what Richie has to say. With Pegasus, and yeah, Pegasus is real, no, no question about that. But the, the Israelis have cultivated an image about themselves which serves them. It demoralizes people. They, they can sell cyber weapons, etc. right? So you, you shouldn't buy into it too much. And, and where's the proof that they're not as hot shit as they say they are? October 7th. That's the end. Why is it doing that? It's like not getting my start times. Hold on. <laughs> you know, let, let me, let me, this is a very, very long article, and I sat down the whole day going through it, adding notes, and, and, and the, I've, I've just given you the gist of it. There's no need for me to go any further, but I'll just add a few last points. I'll add a few last points. The Israelis have always behaved like this. This is their policy. They were brutal in 48. They were brutal in, even before that. Right, and and they were they were brutal in fifty six, and then also in sixty seven, and in seventy two. They've always been brutal, twenty four seven, and so they have turned a machine uh, uh, into a a you know, and they've basically made this AI just as brutal as them and automated the process. That's it. One other point that I would add is that this could be a psyop. What do I mean by a psyop? A psyop is is a is an abbreviation. It basically means a, a psychological operation that that it's it's meant to demoralize the the um, the other side, right? So this could be the Israelis feeding the journalists a bunch of rubbish. Uh, I don't think so, but I'm, I'm just, we're, we're, we're contemplating. This could be the Israelis feeding the journalists a bunch of rubbish about Lavender so that they, they make Hamas feel demoralized. It's like, oh crap, they're going to kill us with our families. They're going to target us, this machine, this robot killer. It could be. 
But I'll tell you know, I'll, I'll, I'll also add another point. The Israelis always love to pretend that they're hot shit, you know, with, with technological um, uh, and electronic in, uh, in, in the tech and electronic domains. What do I mean by this? For example, when they killed um, a nuclear scientist in Iran, they then told the New York Times how they smuggled a gun into Iran and then it, it was an automated uh, uh, gun that killed him. I mean, who the hell knows if that's true? We don't know if that's true. Also, this, this thing with, like, you know, how they know how to, to, to hack everyone with Pegasus. And yeah, Pegasus is real. No, no question about that. But the, the Israelis have cultivated an image about themselves, which serves them. It demoralizes people. They, they can sell cyber weapons, etc. Right? So you, you shouldn't buy into it too much. And, and where's the proof that they're not as hot shit as they say they are? October 7th. Well, anything to say? I mean, I think we covered it. I mean, it, it, again, I felt like you <laughs> primed me for this. Yep. Uh, for other segments before, but it's. It, but but who? But my question is, who created this technology? That. Mm. Like, is it Israel? Is it the U.S.? Is it like, because. Honestly, I can't imagine the U.S. just being, like, doing this on their own. So... No, I mean, we probably have our own Like, that's what I'm wondering, is, like, who created this tap? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, uh, you know, clearly Israel wants to claim it as their own, probably so that they can sell it. But I imagine they had some help, if, if it is real and... You know, if it has the capabilities they're saying it does. But yeah, I don't know. But you know, I'm I'm sure if we weren't demonetized already, YouTube would definitely do it for talking about it. You can go to codashv.com slash indie news network to get around that system. Or scan the QR code on your screen. If you're tired of the YouTube system, you can go to Rockfin and Rumble, link in the description below, and support us on other platforms. Um, you know, but you can always just like and subscribe. Sharing also helps a ton. You know, leaving a comment supposedly helps. You know, help us get to 2K subs. We're getting there. We're like 1-9 something now, right? Uh, Any relief? Okay. <clears throat> uh, 1906. 